Welcome to week 10's power rankings. Um, we're now up to a point where we're getting a good idea of who's going to end up in the playoffs. Uh, there are still wild card spots that are wide open, but in general, things are kind of crystallizing in terms of who's going to make it and who may very well not make it. Number 30, 32 this week, Bengals. Uh, they are last on the board. I, I think I could pretty much just staple the Bengals onto the board right there and leave them there for the rest of the year. I don't see them moving up. That being said, at 31, dropping from last week is Washington. Now, the interesting thing is Washington didn't play this week, but at 1-8, and eight, they still drop. So uh, Washington, yeah, 1-8 and eight record, uh, pretty poor. That being said, also pretty poor at 2-8, uh, the Giants, who lost on the road against the Jets, which means the Jets, winning at home, go to 2-7, and seven, and they're number 29. So your bottom four do not include Miami, and they barely include the Jets. Miami at two and seven, after a win this week against Indianapolis, 16 to 12, who needs offense? Just their defense has managed to actually turn things around. The interesting thing with Miami, I will say this, they were in some games in the second quarter early in the year, and then it would just completely fall apart. So I guess they've decided, you know, if we could skip the completely falling apart thing, we could win a couple. And they've won a couple. So, good call. Number 27. Uh, these guys won this week. They went in and they beat New Orleans. And honestly, at 2-7, and seven, I would be tempted to put them a lot higher. But they're 2-7. and seven. So, Atlanta, I can give them credit. I can have them at 27. But I, I can't justify moving them up any further. At 26, 3-6-1. Six, and one. And for them, they lost this week against Tampa Bay, 30-27, to and that's Arizona. Arizona, again, they've had some good games here and there. Honestly, most football games end up being pretty close in the end. The blowouts seem to be the exception rather than the rule. So for, for fans of teams that have a really poor record, you can look at that and go, well, we were close. And still, you can end up being 26th. 25th, or, yeah, 25th. Uh, coming off of a win at home against Buffalo, which I thought said a lot about both teams and that Cleveland hasn't given up, and that Buffalo might be kind of overrated by their fan base just a little bit. So for Cleveland, they're 3-6, and six, and their overall record is, is still poor, and there will still be people pointing out, you know, they could turn it around. I don't see it, but I admire that kind of uh, optimism. Number 24, they proved to me this week that I had them in the right spot, and that's the LA Chargers. Uh, they lost uh, the Thursday game in against uh, Oakland, and um, now for this coming week, uh, the Chargers are at home against Kansas City. So I would expect that an angry Kansas City team going in against the Chargers probably gets the win, and if they drop to four and seven, that's the end of that. Number 23 at three and six, they didn't play this week, but they also didn't lose because they didn't play. So Denver... Um, they're, they're still in pretty good shape, comparatively speaking, with everybody else down here. The, the problem is that they're still 3-6. and six. So being better off than some of these other teams isn't really going to help them make the playoffs because anybody that's, I would say, 19 and below playoffs are, are done. Uh, number 22, uh, close win this week over Arizona for Tampa. They're 3-6. and six. Uh, the record could easily have been 5-4, and four, depending on certain drop passes and late plays and stuff like that. But you you got to go with the record they have. And Tampa Bay, a hard luck team in the league, and 3-6 uh, and six currently. Number 21, they had a bye week this week. They're 4-5, and five, and that's Jacksonville. So again, below 500. Highly unlikely they make the playoffs, but they find themselves ahead of 11 other teams. Number 20 at 4-5, and five, and... Having a, 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 a decent week, they, they win their game, 20-13, to 13, and that's Chicago. Um, now, the thing is, the team they beat, 3-5-1 and one Detroit, they're 19. You can make an argument that Chicago belongs ahead of Detroit. For me, I, I think Detroit's had more losses where they've looked pretty darn good than, than have Chicago. So, yeah, I can understand that view. And the thing is, neither of them are, are going to make the playoffs anyway, so it's fine. Uh, they could, they could be reversed next week. Uh, yeah. So for, for Chicago, they now get to go and play the Rams. So if they're going to make themselves 
relevant in the whole playoff picture. They now have to go and beat the Rams, who have been far more beatable this year than people had expected. Number 18 at 5-5, five and five, and one of the more unpredictable teams on the board is Tennessee. They have a bye week this week, so they could move up. I don't see any way that they move down. Uh, I don't see any team below them being able to, to bump them down. Even Jacksonville, if Jacksonville won, and if these teams struggled, Jacksonville would move up to 19. So I, I don't see any way that Tennessee would, would end up getting bumped down. Uh, number 17 at 5-4, and four, and it's a stunning drop, honestly, because a couple weeks ago the argument was that Indianapolis might belong in the top 10. And now at 5-4, and four, that division feels kind of wide open. So for Indianapolis... Uh, yeah, kind of a stunning turn of events there. And you, you would have penciled in for, well, they're going to beat Miami. And then they didn't. So that, that makes the schedule that much tougher if you're, you're not going to be able to beat Miami. Uh, number seven, or number 16. They're five and four now. And after beating the Rams 17 to 12, yeah, Pittsburgh's back in this. Uh, it's been four wins in a row. I think the lowest the Steelers got was 25. Now they're up to 16. And yeah, they are they are in this run. They they in a division that I, I think that uh, you know still belongs to Baltimore. I think it would be very 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 unlikely for them to be able to dent Baltimore's lead at all. Uh, Pittsburgh, they've been on a pretty good run. Uh, they don't have the buy this week. They're in Cleveland, so Pittsburgh and Cleveland. Cleveland's chance to show, hey, we're on the comeback. It's for real. Pittsburgh's chance to say, no, it isn't. So. Somebody's going to be saying one or the other after this week. Number 15 at 5-4. and four. Uh, These guys had the week off, and that's Dallas. Uh, no reason to bump Dallas up or down based on their result, only based on those that are happening around them. So uh, they move up past Indianapolis, and we'll see how, how things go for them this coming week. Number 14 at 5-4 and four. after beating the Chargers, the Raiders. Pretty good spot at five and four. Uh, they they look like they could end up being nine and seven, maybe ten and six. But ten and six would involve going uh, five and two from here, and that gets a little tricky. Uh, number thirteen also at five and four, and that's Philadelphia. So again, and I know people get like, wait, how can you have Philadelphia ahead of Dallas? Because I can. And it's just it's just that's yeah, I I can. Uh, it's it's something that I I can do. And I don't necessarily just look at how a team has played against each other. I look at the overall picture, and I think the Eagles are in better shape than the, than the Dallas Cowboys. It, but, it, again, that can change from week to week, and we'll see how these guys do this coming week. Uh, number 12 at 5-4. And, four, and I, I really could have bumped the Rams down probably to about here. But I'm willing to give them a little bit of the benefit of the doubt since they lost to the Steelers, who are here. So... Bit of a benefit of the doubt, but the Rams do make me nervous. Remember, they started the season up at, like, top three. And now, here we are. Uh, they're, they're nowhere near. Uh, number 11, also at 5-4. and four, And losing in Green Bay this week, so I didn't think that that necessarily spoke poorly of the uh, Carolina Panthers. But we'll see what happens with them going forward. Because Carolina has been... Hard to read from one week to the next. Uh, losing to Green Bay, there's no shame in that, though. Uh, number 10 at 6-3. and three, And dropping a bit. Uh, they lost 19-16 to 16 in Cleveland. So is, is Buffalo a playoff team? Or are they not a playoff team? Or if they make the playoffs, are they just going to go out in week one? What's going to happen? Like, are they just out in the wild card round? Or what? where does that end up? Uh, Balt or, uh, Buffalo is, is I, I think their record probably flatters them a little bit. And we're going to find out pretty much this week because this week they are against Miami. So Miami, 2-7, and seven, looks miserable. But you just never know. Miami's won a couple of games they weren't supposed to. So Buffalo cannot overlook Miami or who knows. Maybe, that, maybe their defense nullifies Buffalo's offense. Maybe it's a 3-3 game going into the fourth quarter. No idea. Number nine, they had the bye week this week. But for Houston... Uh, they, they do benefit from the fact that Buffalo uh, fell. So Houston finds themselves in ninth because Buffalo took that bit of a fall. And if Buffalo loses this week against Miami, they'll probably find themselves down right about here. Number eight, uh, taking a loss this week against Tennessee. 
And in general, at six and four, I, I have to, I have to say that that it, seeing them without Mahomes has been, you know, it's it's been something to watch this team. But they they do desperately need to have a healthy Mahomes for when they get to the playoffs. And I still see them as being the the team that wins that division and being pretty solid in the playoffs. Um, this week's result notwithstanding, number seven at seven and three. And, and a team that's really tough to call. So, uh, oh, yeah, they beat Dallas this week. Um, Minnesota. So, in beating Dallas this week, 28-24, apologies. Um, I'm, I'm trying to make this one go a lot faster in that these videos haven't been performing nearly as well over the last few weeks. So, there's other stuff I want to discuss. And so, I'm trying to condense this down. Uh, number seven, Minnesota. They're one of those ones too. From one week to the next, what are you going to get? So I don't really see them as as necessarily contenders. To me, everybody from six and up could end up in the, the Super Bowl. And yet, number eight, you don't want to roll them out either because a healthy Patrick Mahomes of playoff time could be very, very dangerous. At number six, at eight and two, and uh, with a win this week over Carolina, Green Bay. Green Bay Packers. Pretty darn solid season at eight and two. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of teams I think that are going to end up eleven and five, twelve and four, maybe thirteen and three. So a lot of teams with really good records, and they're going to clash probably week two slash week three, and there could be some really really good football games in this year's playoffs. Really excellent football games. Number five, these guys uh, had the week off. They're eight and one, and it's uh, it's New England. So for New England, they're they're down to number five, but I will say this: uh, a good result in coming weeks, they could find themselves right back at number one. I think the number one spot when it was New England's, they were pretty firmly entrenched there because they didn't really play anybody. And once they showed vulnerability against Baltimore, now this week uh, for people playing along at home, uh, the New England Patriots will be playing in Philadelphia against the Eagles. So that's a big game for both teams. The Eagles come through, and if they beat New England, New England looks a little weaker, probably finds themselves behind Green Bay next week. Not going to likely drop them any further down unless Philadelphia just lays a whooping on them, in which case they could find themselves down as low as 8th, depending on what happens with uh, Kansas City. Um, number 4, it's 7-2, and two, experiencing a setback this week. And for New Orleans, yeah, it's an off week. And, you know, not a great week, but still, I bumped them down. Uh, for that one loss and we'll see if they're able to bounce back uh, in this coming week when they're in Tampa Bay so that's a big game for them and for Tampa Bay they can play spoiler it's fun to play spoiler sometimes and so they get the opportunity to do that number three at seven and two Baltimore so coming off of this absolute shellacking they gave the Cincinnati Bengals uh, they now are at home against Houston so for people who are going to say I have Baltimore too high on the board, understand, I understand completely if people feel that way. Baltimore now gets a chance to prove they belong at this point if they can beat Houston. If they can't, that means that Houston could find themselves in the top row and Baltimore could find themselves down as low as, I'll say, sixth. I'm not going to bump them any further than that, I don't think, depending on what happens in that game. But uh, for Baltimore right now, yeah, they belong in third. Now, first and second, eight and one and eight and two. I went back and forth on this. So I watched this last night, and I have to say the play calling by Seattle, both in the fourth quarter and then in the overtime, was infuriating. Um, in that it was obvious what they were trying to do and it wasn't going to work. Um, some some poorly timed passes. I, I found myself yelling at the TV a lot at Seattle. And I'm not even a Seattle fan. So I thought, you know, this this is a frustrating game to watch. Uh, I have them at one because they beat San Francisco. I had them at two, and then I thought, no. They won the game in overtime. They eventually got that field goal for the victory. It eventually happened. Uh, yes, they left too much time on the clock in the fourth quarter. They weren't able to get that first down because I thought their play calling sucked. They should have finished it in regulation, but they did get the win. So I bumped them ahead of San Francisco because that's who they beat. But again, this this to me is 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 a hair margin. Uh, Russell Wilson is the MVP of the league right now in my eyes. And no offense to Mahomes over here. But uh, Wilson's been fantastic. And Seattle, 
Uh, they, they owe him a lot. They're eight and two right now and we'll see how far they can go with this, but they've made it so that San Francisco at least looks human. Now San Francisco has, has had some of those games this year where it's been close. And now that they finally had their first defeat. So we will have no teams that go 0 and 16 and we will have no teams that go 16 and 0. that, that all talk, uh, all that talk dies today, but, uh, we'll see, we'll see how things go for Seattle, uh, in upcoming weeks. They have the week off this week. Uh, San Francisco is at home against Arizona. I, I don't see a way that that necessarily rests back the number one spot from Seattle. But we'd, again, we'd have to see what the final score is and how things are. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I'll talk to you again soon.